So I'm loving this, first of all. This is awesome. Thank you. What I'm really curious about is, so there you were in this beginning of this relationship. Yeah. You had all these things that you were expecting, needing, wanting from him. Yeah. So uh, what's really curious to me is how he, how AJ was able to be with you, love you, yeah. give to you, but also with, without expecting anything in return. That's like, that's almost like blows my mind. Yeah. That, because I know as a man, if I'm trying to woo a woman or attract a woman, you know, I'm hoping that she responds back. So to give that without needing anything or expecting anything, it just must have been getting you crazy. I, I don't know. So I, I, I want to just hear yeah. maybe how you, how he was able to give to you yeah. and, and, and still be in that really clear place. So I feel he was able to give to me because he's a highly developed individual who has dealt with a lot of his emotions. And during the time, he continued to deal with his emotions. He has a set of principles and standards that he will not, he will not break. He will not do these things. And I wanted him to. Like, I was, I was trying to please him. I would do things that I thought that he wanted and he would say, Han, I can't let you do that because I can feel that you're just doing it because you want, you know, you want to please me. You don't even want to do it. You, I, we're not doing it. And I would be like, there is no way I can get this man to need me. I couldn't feel I was not sensitive to the fact that he wanted me, that he just wanted me. I didn't, I didn't have the feeling that anyone would just want me. They need to, they need, to need me. They need to, I need to fulfill a certain set of requirements or roles, and then I'll feel secure. So I went through a whole period, and I'm still going through a whole period, <laughs> of feeling so vulnerable and insecure because there's nothing that I can do all he wants from me is me. And, and that's all he's ever wanted from me for six years. And I would try to present a facade. I would try to do things to please him. And he would go, I don't want this bit of you. This isn't even you. And that was so challenging. Um, and remains so because it's like a beautiful pain, if I can call it that, to have someone really want to see who you are and want that even though it's not perfect because I'd really like to be perfect <laughs> um, but the real me isn't and so um, yeah it was it was kind of a crazy time because AJ had this set of principles that he wasn't going to break he wasn't going to barter with me every time I tried to sacrifice for him he would stop me he would reject it and he wasn't sacrificing himself, although probably, honey, you would say at a lot of times you did value you, me above you, didn't you? And that's something that you've had to work through. Yeah. Do, did you want to add? Or? Yeah. Um, if maybe Chris can put the camera there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the feeling I had was... Um, that I was probably I, I had a, I've had a lot of issues to work through with regard of my, my own worth, and so initially um, there was the feeling coming out of me towards Mary that Mary was worth more to me than I was, and so Mary often tried to play on that, um, yeah. but also I had to work through gaining more worth, even though. Um, and I've had to work through gaining more worth with others as well in the same way, even though everyone around me thinks that I've got less worth than they have. And in, and in fact, there's still a lot of people in our lives that feel that I have less worth than they have. Um, and, uh, and so I'm still working through the issues of worth. So for me, that's one of the issues that got triggered through this process. I had to work through issues of my personal worth and how little I valued myself in comparison to the value that I placed upon Mary. Yeah, and keep in mind that I came into this relationship, I was very arrogant. You know, I felt like I knew how things should be done. I felt like I wasn't self-aware about any of these things, and I was used to being a little condescending to men, maybe you'd say quite a lot. Well, there's uh, also the probably issue of even listening, wasn't there, like... I would listen to you for hours about what you wanted to say and then 
and Mary had struggled listening to me for five minutes, actually, um, and quite frequently for the first year or two, um, Mary didn't listen to me at all about any, anything personal. So she would listen to me about, if I was discussing anything about herself, but as soon as I started to discuss anything about my personal emotions, Mary wouldn't listen to me at all. And, uh, and so it, it took me a while to uh, gain the self-worth to say, no, hang on a sec, this is not on now, girl. Like, it's not on that you do this. It's yeah. not on that you uh, allow yourself. It's unethical for you to expect to have a relationship with somebody that they listen to everything you say and you listen to nothing they say about themselves, you know. And so it took me some time to work through some of those issues emotionally. It helped when we met because I was actually... Um, I, w I dealt with most of those issues within the first three months of meeting, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because I was pretty open to dealing with my emotions by the time I met Mary. So, and Mary was quite uh, close towards me quite frequently in that period. So within the first three or four months, um, I attracted a lot of women who basically treated me the same way. So I, so I did deal with a lot of emotions, particularly initially, which stressed Mary out quite significantly as well. Yeah, I, um, and that's probably the thing that I wanted to say, that during all of this... Um, I've watched AJ continue to grow. I mean, this is something that happened while I was doing, I was like holding on the grim death to all of these things that I wanted love to be. Meanwhile, he was so humble. He didn't even, you know, he was just dealing with what was coming up from him that this woman was like trying to boss him and trying to do all these things and not valuing him. He grieved all these things, which only made his love for me more pure, which maybe, was even... Maybe if I give an example, and perhaps I should stand with yeah, you yeah. guys. If I give an example of it, um, shortly after we met, um, we, we started to watch occasional movies together, right? And, and one movie, I remember we were in England, and, uh, and one movie was a, a movie about love, you know? I don't think it was a notebook, I think it was something else. I can't remember. And I can't remember the movie, actually, now. But... Uh, but Mary rubbished the movie the entire way through the movie. Like, uh, and she had this really condescending viewpoint towards love. Uh, and it just struck me that my soulmate was so callous to love. Like, um, and and uh, like I, I just felt so much grief about that because um, I realised at that point that that meant that this was going to be a long <laughs> a long <laughs> period of time before, before I'd probably re feel any love from her, you know. And, uh, and so I, I went up to my room at the time we were staying with somebody else and I went up to my room and just cried for a couple of hours but she eventually came up to the room and heard me crying <laughs> and, uh, and then she was really angry about me crying about it so she really was, was swearing and carrying on at me yeah. about crying about her... her uh, feelings about love, you know. Um, because keep in mind, in my list, sharing emotions was something that I felt love did. Here's this guy who keeps feeling emotions and I feel responsible. I've got to be, like, I've got to take, I've got to soothe and comfort these emotions out of him. Which and I didn't want. He didn't want that. He just wanted to keep feeling and I would just get more and more stressed out. Like, I can't, I can't control this guy. I can't make him happy. And so I just feel like I don't want to feel so terribly responsible. Um, and that was different to actually taking responsibility. I just, I just kind of self-punished about it, which is what I had learnt you do when you're trying to be sorry. Which I would also say something about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. so there was a lot of truth coming my way and a lot of emotion, and I wasn't used to any of it. Um, and well, I can sit down now, can't I? So, yeah. no. <laughs> I don't want you going. Um, so this... Maybe just to finish off the list before I move on to the next thing. I wanted, I wanted this barter and I wanted a role. I couldn't get it. It infuriated me. I, I tried to sacrifice. He wouldn't even let me do that. He just wanted me to be me. I didn't want to be me. It was, I didn't like me. It wasn't going to be good if I was just me. You know, I wasn't proud of who I was underneath all this facade and control. Also, Instead of comforting and soothing my emotions, he kept pointing out my emotions and encouraging me towards my emotions, and I didn't want to feel them. 
I was angry. I was like, and actually every time I'd start to feel my emotions, they were so big and so overwhelming and confirmed all this stuff about who I was. I, so I would just like open up for five minutes, shut down for five months. And I, I was really like a rock, wasn't I? Hun? I was really, really hard. Um, yeah, and he wouldn't let me share his emotions. And so I just wanted him to stop having them. And so I would try to control him feeling with rage. Um, all the while trying to maintain a facade of being a nice, good girl because, you know, I had a lot of approval for that. So it was very, um, it was very confusing even for me. And for you, I guess you could always feel the emotions coming out of me, but you had to call me on lying a lot of times, didn't you? Where I'd try to be all nice and pleasant, and AJ would be like, you are raging right now. And I would have to go, no, I'm not raging. <laughs> and try to keep it all under wraps. I was even terrified to just admit that I was angry. Um, and, and that actually I had all of these things inside of me. Letting go of a lot of these things has felt like letting go of the thing that I wanted to use to feel secure in the world. Letting go of a set of armour, letting go of the way I control everything. It's felt really, really scary a lot of times. Um, and as I said, emotionally confronting and letting those things go has taken me time. Like. I have so much compassion for, for my man when he says, yeah, I knew it was going to be a long time. Even the humility that he had in that of he never projected impatience at me. He never projected, would you hurry up? You're hurting me. He never blamed me for the emotions that were being triggered inside of him. And I did the exact opposite. Everything I was feeling, I just blamed him for, you know, and... And again, that's where I get really emotional because that's such a... And I often encourage people when I see them in relationships and things now to just feel what is going on for you. If you can do that, you will become so much clearer with your partner. And as someone who hasn't done that but has received the gift of a partner actually feeling their stuff and becoming clearer and more truthful and more loving with me as a result... It's changed me in a way that I'm not, I'm sure I'm not going to be able to describe to you today properly, but I really would love to because it's such a, a it's a life-changing thing. And I feel that this is, this is why I'm so passionate about this path as well, because this is what we can offer to each other, even when we're not in a relationship. To be a presence of real love for another person alters them. It really does, and I feel that I, I, that's how I want to be. And, I, and I'm coming from this place, and, and I feel that if I can do it, we can all do it. Trust me. 